nation. This week, Group M came out with their 10th annual report on India's fast-growing sports industry. Now, this report laid down sponsorship numbers that we will be talking about in this week's episode of Business of Sports. Now, let me tell you, everyone, Indian sports industry saw a significant 105% growth in 2022 from 2021, with sponsorship spends recording a figure of 5,907 crore. Now, this is a huge number. Isn't it? But let me tell you, this includes the crown sponsorship, team sponsorship and franchisee fee. But as I said that this is a huge number and we need someone who can actually simplify these numbers for us. And like every episode in this episode also, we have someone to actually make us understand what are these sponsorship numbers, what these sponsorship numbers signify. And on that note, let me introduce Network 18 Group Sports Editor, K. Srinivas Rao. Hello, Srini. Welcome to Business of Sports. And um, I am glad that we are taking in these sponsorship numbers in this episode because I am very interested to understand what are these numbers like. Yes, yes, Ramaya. Thank you for having uh, me. And um, uh, yes, you, you made a very important point. These numbers are important. You know, I, I keep uh, saying this again and again, that the pace at which the industry is moving, it is important that people educate themselves on the, you know, on the nitty gritties of the industry also, as much as they follow sport. It is important for us as a nation to start yeah. understanding what makes the industry tick. So, yes, let's do the needful. Let's begin. Before we begin, um, an applause and due credit to Sporting Nation. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's a product of Group M and WPP, major media buyers. They come out with this every year. They've been coming out, with, you know, with this product one for the last 10 years. And yeah. uh, well, by far, I think um, they are the ones who are closest to determining the the industry numbers. So, yes, let's begin. Yes. So, uh, Srini, first of all, this report came up with a huge percentage. That's 105 percent. And, you know, when we uh, come up with such huge numbers, there is no one else other than you to make us understand what are these numbers about. But I'm glad I know uh, somewhere uh, later in this conversation, we will be talking about cricket as well. But I am glad that we will begin this conversation with all these sports in consideration. So at uh, first, I want to know from you, what's the big picture like, what these numbers signify, and what's this whole report all about? Okay, look, look uh, I, yes, 105% uh, hike is a very, very uh, good number to look at. Uh, break it down. I would suggest uh, break it down into uh, different parts. One uh, active uh, spot, on-field spot was returning after uh, you know uh, being under the shadow of the pandemic right so cricket returning on the field much of all cricket you know cricket also happened during the pandemic but it was restricted cricket uh, restricted in terms of you know spectators restricted in terms of appeal so full fledgedly cricket returning on the field meant ground sponsorships once again hitting uh, the top button in india uh, they, uh, BCCI got a brand new sponsor uh, in the space last year. And uh, well, is the sponsor going to continue or not is a different uh, argument. We'll have to do another show for it. But uh, so as I said, as cricket kept coming out of the pandemic, you know, uh, things started to kind of add up. Now, 597% is uh, the income allocated from franchise fees. Franchise, and yeah. uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, a total of uh, 1,644 crores uh, came in through franchise fee alone. And of this, uh, you know, I I'd like to talk about um, how two new franchisees, uh, Gujarat Titans and uh, Lucknow Super Giants, the Lucknow franchise and the Gujarat franchise raised the bar. I mean, uh, the, the Lucknow franchise was sold at almost a billion dollars and yeah. uh, Gujarat Titans a little less than a billion dollars. It went at around 5,600 uh, 5, crore. So that was huge, huge money coming into Indian cricket. Are we going yes. to see these same numbers again repeated year after year? Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, we don't know when is the next time BCCI will sell franchises again. But yeah, yeah. on the, all those counts, it was a phenomenal year. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if we see 2021, we thought that it's a good year in those terms. Then uh, now we are looking at the numbers of 2022. It looks that it was even better. And as you mentioned that it was because of the pandemic, you know, it's also because of the two new, uh, the teams that were introduced in the IPL. Then also there were other leagues. If you uh, talk about, you know, the foreign leagues uh, and you also talk about the T20 World Cup, Asia Cup, FIFA World Cup. And I'm sure that all these uh, tournaments must have created an impact on these uh, numbers but if we see 2023 and only to begin with we saw this year with women's premier league and there's a lot more that's uh, you know slated to happen in this year now do we uh, actually are we expecting 2023 to be the best year in those terms you know uh, uh, wouldn't you want to believe that i mean 105 <laughs> percent uh you know 2020 one, if you look at the total uh, spends that happened, not not just sponsorship. Look at yeah. uh, look at it from a sponsorship standpoint. You know, uh, media spends, endorsements. Let let's put everything. Uh, you know, kind of uh, in in one uh, this thing, and then let's look at what are the figures that got generated in the year twenty twenty one. It was sure. to the extent of nine and a half thousand crore, right? Yeah. To total industry spends across sponsorship. Uh, and endorsements and and uh, you know and media spends. Yes. That figure nine thousand five hundred odd crore went out went up, went up to fourteen thousand two hundred crore in the yeah. year twenty twenty two. Okay, that is the hike that we saw. It is a total you know it's a close to a fifty percent hike that we've yeah. uh, uh, you know kind of we have witnessed. Now yeah. are we saying that this is going to further rise in the year twenty twenty three? Why? Because you know. Uh, well, uh, women's franchises have come in, yeah. you know, so uh, 4,300 odd crores were generated yeah. only by sale of five women's franchises. Plus, uh, the women's broadcast rights went on sale. That's another 1,000 crore coming. Yeah. So, will these figures go up in the year 2023? I don't know, you know, honestly. It also is waited to be seen. See, while this is the bright side, there is also a challenging side. For example, mm -hmm. Tata IPL, right? Tata's association with IPL comes to an end after this yeah. season gets over. Yeah. Will Tata renew? Mm. And if Tata doesn't renew, is BCCI going to get a title sponsor at the same value? Mm. If BCCI manages to get a title sponsor at the same value, will it get a title sponsor to stay with them over long term? Or will it be an annual contract? A year by year contract, right? Mm. For, uh, look at 2022. It is for the first time that BCCI uh, managed to raise 1000 crore officially by yeah. sale of all its sponsorship slots, right? Yeah. Will they agree? Will they manage to sustain this number going into 2023? Yeah. So, uh, well, it's a fight, huh? I mean, I can tell you. That it's a saturating market, and we've discussed this right in our yeah. our shows in the past. We've discussed right. it's a saturating market. Yeah. Not necessarily, you know. When I say it's a saturating market, people are like, you know, acha the low no. cricket me paisa dalna band kar rahe hai. No, that's <laughs> not the point, right? Um, you know, the, the priorities are changing. There are yeah. more, uh, you know, options available. So keeping that in mm -hmm. mind, I think. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that it's like, a, you know, grass is so green uh, for the entire year of 2023. No, I think Indian cricket will have its share of challenges. And, and I'm glad that, you know, some way or the other and somehow that you have uh, brought in cricket into this conversation. And actually, that takes me to the next question, uh, Srini. Now, we are talking about that there has been 105% growth. And, uh, you know, in all the answers before, you told me that it's a huge growth. And we are expecting such kind of growth in coming years as well. And especially when we talked about 2023. But Srini, I want to know from this 105%, let's, let's just imagine that there's a big pie of 105 percent and uh, how much of that pie goes to cricket I i'm sure that <laughs> a large piece of cake goes to uh cricket over there but yeah the exact of amount. course it's it's well it's a sad reality but then uh that's a fact out of um, you know this figure of 14,200 odd crores which i'm uh speaking talking about for the year 
2022 almost um 12000 1200 crore 1200 crore is registered for cricket alone Mm. whatever remains is across all other emerging sports you know just, so just um, uh, the, the man who sat and worked on this report sporting nation who uh, who works on this year after year is a good friend of mine um okay. vinit karnik he is the yeah. south asia head for uh, sports e sports and entertainment at uh, wpp group and you were speaking uh, to him he... a few days back i remember yes, yes. for those who have not seen that video please uh, do watch it on cricket next it's available on our youtube channel so please watch it there yes i i was sitting with vinith and i i was you know staring at these numbers you know while 1400 200 you know whatever i mean uh, this figure uh, 14200 crore looks sounds very good and, yeah and gives us a sort of hope well 12000 yeah. odd crore is registered for cricket is reserved for cricket alone which means whatever 2000 crore odd crore is for every other sport across the country that includes yes. all our olympic glory uh, you know and uh, football hockey everything every other sport that india plays so yes. that's a star- sad reality that's a stark reality all those ramya yeah i uh, am generally a positive guy uh, okay. that's how i like to uh, you know see things the glass yeah. always being half full and in yeah. that i would like to make a prediction that when these okay. numbers some day these numbers are going to start changing some day mm. some day will arrive in indian sport when these numbers yeah. are going to start changing yeah. wait for that day and when those yeah. numbers start changing suramya i can tell mm. you they will change really fast why yeah. because I think but but Shreemi, I, I understand. Idea. Yeah, I understand. I'll, I'll, you know, stop you there, and I, I'll, I want you to, you know, continue that a little later. But right now, I know that the future yep. seems bright, but at the present time, do you think it's a bit unfair for the other sports? Because I really want to know about the present situation also. Unfair. See, you, uh, you know, again, at the cost of being repetitive, beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, right? I mean, <laughs> what public consumes it is what sells, and what sells yeah. is what you know brings the numbers. So it that's, is the public. It is not reality. unfair. It is, yeah. Hmm. The the stark reality is how India is consuming a product, what product yeah. in what quantity, and that is for the paying public to take a call, right? So you know, Olympics is. a uh, a uh, once in four year uh, glory time for us right i mean how many yeah. how many times in a year does the country come really get together to back up a pv sin mm. right it yeah. only happens when she's playing uh, at the olympics or probably you know um, in the world championship facing a chinese a top chinese star and you know and and we know that sindhu can probably you know uh, uh, it's not even a surprise we know sindhu can pull it off so yeah. those are, so how many times like these in a year is india really backing its biggest badminton star now look at the quantity mm. of cricket that is happening uh, yeah. across a span of a year right 365 days and um, consumption levels are high so also i mean you know the content that is being produced is equally high right so the yeah. engagement that is happening is a year long engagement year after year right yeah. i think uh, that is where the difference lies probably but but mm. then but 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 am i saying that you know if india were to start a badminton league things would change overnight no i don't think so mm. i don't think so you know yeah. so you got to see things precisely for what they are i don't think right now much is uh, uh you know much can be done and or rather much needs to be done olympic mm. sports they come once in four years and yes uh, you know the industry backs them public the, the 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 consumers want to engage with olympic sports once every four years i think that's a ritual that has its own space i think let's so, leave it at that what i would like to see is other team sports that india consumes yeah and there when will we start seeing a hike in number for example uh, you know we as a nation have followed football Mm. right then why are the numbers not there yeah i think the numbers are there i think mm. the numbers are there mm. in masses this these numbers are only begin you know 
we are we still at a very nascent stage and i yeah. think yeah. in another decade uh, going into another decade i think these numbers are going to be extremely massive i mean from a football yeah. standpoint i can tell you that yeah and actually um, you know um i i don't have the exact uh, idea of the numbers in terms of the viewers and all but if you see in terms of the attendees in the stadium uh, for a football match there's been a significant rise from a uh, past couple of years i saw you know people attending uh, matches uh, in the isl and i remember i saw people you know booking tickets to the goa and uh, because they wanted to watch a match out there a football match and uh, also for other sports as you mentioned the other team sports i think as you mentioned that you know the future is bright it might take some time but uh, yes it seems bright but uh, you sure. mentioned about how uh, cricket is a big brand here and uh, it will continue to be uh, don't know for how long but uh, at least either <laughs> for near future we well, are looking another at another 25 30 years nothing is changed <laughs> Okay, so in in those terms, then Shreeni, uh, while we are talking about the sponsorship numbers right now, I want to know uh, where BCCI is um, at this moment. Where do they feature in this whole uh, big story? So yeah, so for BCCI, like you know, um, it's such a it's such a uh, you know interesting phase. Do they look back at twenty twenty two and gloat? or they look forward to 2023 and worry uh, i'm not worry but uh, yeah. stay cautious uh, yeah. well they have a job on hands uh, they have yeah. their task cut out for the year uh, 2023 um, huh. you know this is about sustenance and hmm. this is about doing something you know remarkably different in order to ensure that the properties that run under the bcci umbrella continue to retain their appeal hmm. okay appeal is important and appeal is something you know from a federation standpoint uh, when you look at a property a property i have always believed that the property constantly needs to keep looking at new things keep looking at innovating itself not from a game and experience perspective but from a broadcast consumption perspective also things need to innovate constantly which is something mm. that i i have always kept saying that the bccci has regularly failed to you mm. know accomplish this uh, yeah. i i keep saying that ipl as a product you know um, i have not seen um, any anything different happening uh, yeah. in ipl uh, you know yeah. uh, look at this uh, new impact player rule yeah. which is coming um, yeah. i don't find the rule impressive at all in fact it uh, further complicates things you know you can you uh, it it is time consuming it is complicating yeah. how is it really helping and that rare element of surprise is also gone i mean see your fans can disagree with me uh, you mm. know as a sport people mm. can have varied opinions i am yeah. of the opinion that um, the impact player rule should apply before the toss not after the toss maybe there are people who probably want to believe that things can happen after toss which is fine but then simplify it keep it as a like you know 11 plus 1 12 player and one player stays your impact player why complicate mm. it further all along you know it time consuming mm. and uh, and you well know, that's we need to our next week let's tell our viewers that is this is going to be our yeah. episode in the coming week um you know when a match does not get over in a a, a slotted uh, time period time period yeah what are the after effects of it you know what are mm. people think that are chalne do na mere paas to time hai 12 baje tak chal raha hai to kya problem hai i will keep watching yeah. no it is unhealthy and next week episode we will talk about why this is considered unhealthy yeah. but anyway sticking to what is now i think um, bcci needs to open up and understand what it needs to do to keep these numbers going at a sustainable yeah. pace right yeah is it sustainable? first of all are the numbers sustainable going forward yeah and if not then what can be done to make them sustainable and hmm. if nothing can be done then does bcci need to reprioritize its own strategy uh, yeah. right i mean there are questions that bcci needs to ask of itself rather than sitting and saying hum to bcci hai we are bcci <laughs> money will keep coming i think you can show on yeah. that also right the lala syndrome 
I yeah. think that 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 is something this DJ needs to come out of. Yeah, yeah. And uh, regarding this topic, Shreeni, I think we have covered length and breadth of it. We have discussed the numbers. We have discussed quite a lot of it. But uh, last question for you from my side. Um, where do you think the sporting industry, the Indian sports industry stand um, on global fronts right now? Well, uh, where it stands on the global front, um, well, the options are, see, there's only one thing that has not happened as yet. The okay. Indian investor is going wherever an opportunity is available, right? Yeah. I'll give you an example. The Big Bash T20 yes. League, Cricket Australia's T20 yeah. League, is yeah. a state-run product. It's a, it's a Cricket Australia-run product. The Cr yeah. Cricket Australia literally finances big BBL, hmm. right? Year after hmm. year. Hmm. And it's in a financially... Um, stressed out uh, state, right? I mean, you know, hmm. Big Bash is struggling in terms of hmm. its finances, right? If it has to ensure that a David Warner um, does not get lured by private T20 leagues around the world and continues to stay in Australia, I'm talking about the near and distant future, yeah. then obviously Cricket Australia has to pay David Warner better, right? Yeah. To ensure that he signs their contract and not some other foreign league. Other, yeah. Where is the money? Where is the money? There is only that bit which is come, uh, you know, happening. And Australia's time zone is such that it is not um, yeah. catering to the rest of the world, right? Yeah. So there is a chance that, um, well, Cricket Australia will have be left with no choice but to privatize. Hmm. Why then they do it? When they know that privatization will allow them to sustain and it hmm. will allow them to make money uh, why mm. don't they do it? You know why mm. they don't do it? I mean, I'm taking a very calculated and uh, a loud <laughs> guess here. Uh, my guess would be that they don't do it because they know the moment they decide to, decide to sell teams, they'll all be only be team, Indian team owners. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. So, yes. why am I saying this is because the investor from India is going places. You know, you open a T20 league in, New, uh, in US, Mumbai Indians lands in New York. You yeah. know, you look, at, you look at the league going to South Africa, Indian IPL owners have landed there. Emirates T20 League, Indian owners have landed Indian there, owners. right? Yeah. Uh, the broadcast market, again, as I keep saying time and again, is, is India-centric. Right? And yeah. I keep saying this. doesn't matter where you are producing what cricket content anywhere in the world. If you're not selling it in India, then you're primarily not in business, right? Yeah. What exactly is stopping from this machinery from going bizarre is the Indian cricketer does not play abroad. The Indian cricketer plays only in India. I right? so wanted you to actually say this. I was waiting for it from quite a while. Yeah. So yeah. the Indian cricketer, so, you know, we, we keep talking about this. We, we keep hearing this argument like, you know, time and again, it is so unfair on part of BCCI that yeah. it does not allow... I don't think it is unfair on part of BCCI. The BCCI right now wants to protect its stock. Well, let me tell you, they can do this a little more intelligently. But then okay. that we'll reserve it for another day. But yeah. think about where BCCI is coming from. Their biggest selling point is the India cricketer. You want yeah. to watch an India cricketer in action, you have to watch a property that BCCI is selling. Yes. If I were to give away an right. India cricketer in the South Africa League, then it dilutes the property that I'm running out of India, no? Yeah. That right. is the value. That is the value and that is the sustainability factor. Now, is this going to change in the near future? No. Unless, you know, I've always said cricket is a, is a India's biggest soft power. And if, if yeah. uh, something from... You know, it's from, from that angle, if something works out, then it's a different proposition altogether. Purely from a sporting angle, I don't see this changing. You know, as I'm saying, politically it might. That's not my space yeah. to get into right now. But, yeah. um, you know, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, purely from a cricket uh, industry-driven perspective, India is not going to change it. So to answer your question, where do I see this from a global standpoint? Is... Mm. For BCCI to ensure that it strengthens its domestic circuit. Okay. IPL is a domestic tournament, right? Mm, yeah. And I think there has to be constant effort the BCCI needs to put 
in strengthening its domestic enterprise okay because the moment they stop doing it they allow the outsider to set a foot in mm. and i think it is extremely important for the bcci okay. to take care of the fact that it constantly needs to innovate experiment and excel mm. not go you know thinking that cricket hai bikta hai it's a mm. it's harmful like that mm. is harmful i think we'll yeah. do a show on this sometime you know yeah. uh, where uh, i think it needs to be suggested in terms of what can we keep saying again and again that you need to experiment that you need to do ex- keep excelling with the product that you have how you mm. need to do it probably will take another show well absolutely absolutely we will talk about it in another episode of business of sports but today we have actually discussed about all these sports we have discussed about cricket in here and uh, as i said in the very beginning that uh, when i introduced i said that uh, this is a huge jump 105% growth and the numbers are huge but here we have uh, shrini to simplify those numbers and thank you so much shrini for simplifying it for all of us and uh, we will meet you uh, with With another interesting topic in another episode thank you thank you bye 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 so i was in conversation with network 18 group sports editor keshav nivas rao as always he simplified various numbers for us in this episode we were talking about the group m report which came up with sponsorship numbers uh, for the indian uh, sports industry we also discussed about cricket what this reports mean uh, for uh, cricket and uh, we will be talking about more such interesting topics in our various episodes of business of sports so for each and every episode stay tuned with cricket next because in cricket next we always come up with various interesting reports updates and live sessions so for everything you stay tuned with cricket next kyuki cricket matlab cricket next